Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome into another episode of the Format Podcast. All right. Normally, we do these on Saturday nights at 7 p.m., and I wasn't planning on doing one, but um, uh, then, you know, I'm, watch- I'm watching these college football games, mainly the Texas and the Georgia, and I'm like, man, I got to get on and do this show, man. I got to get the people what they want. So here we are. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate you. And um, what we're going to do now, we're going to give a few minutes and uh, see if we get some people in the chat. Then we're going to go ahead and uh, and uh, get it started because i uh, got some good topics to discuss. It's just going to be me tonight. Um, the other guys on the team, they're not, they're not here tonight. So uh, I'm going to do this solo, and uh, hopefully I will do this with whoever decides to uh, join me, and we'll see what we got going on because, again, I think we got some really interesting topics. And uh, as you can see by the thumbnail, we're going to talk some Victor Weminyama and some really interesting top uh, comments that he made recently that I think may have something to do in terms of being reflective about the state of the modern NBA. Then we're going to talk about uh, Tim Hardaway Sr., a uh, Hall of Famer who's who was an outstanding player and kind of an innovator in certain ways. And we'll get to him and some comments that he had on uh, the recent uh, appearance on the All the Smoke podcast with uh, Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson. Then we'll talk about Kyle Shanahan and ask the big question, is he overrated? And finally, we will uh, close out by wrapping up some uh, college football. And I'm not going to get too into that because, as you know, we normally do a show with uh, our uh, former Division One wide receiver, kick returner, and professional, uh, Ryan. So um, we will do that later this week. But I definitely wanted to touch on some of the big uh, – some of my thoughts in college football before we call it a night. All right? So uh, before we get going with all that, you know what time it is. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, that notification bell. Make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you want the audio only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, and we should come right up. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you give us that like, that five star review, and drop a comment. All that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm, helps us find more sports fans, helps more sports fans find us. And finally, Make sure you write it down, put it in your phone, set an alarm, do whatever you got to do to remember. Saturday nights at 7 p.m., we are live here on the Format Podcast, and we'll give you the opportunity to call in, talk to us, get at me. I love it. I can't. All right. Um, cool. Let's go to topic number two. This goes a lot faster when I don't have my guys with me to, to argue with. <laughs> um, okay. Let's go to Tim Hardaway Sr. So I was listening to a recent episode of All the Smoke podcast, pretty good podcast with uh, Stephen Jackson and Matt Barnes. And they had the legendary Tim Hardaway Sr., the originator of the killer crossover, the UTEP two-step, um, which was a vicious move. And um, by the way, he did that without carrying. You know, he didn't carry the ball. He didn't double dribble. He didn't travel. None of that. He just come down. He didn't play with the ball. He, and he could do all that. He was a Chicago playground baller. So, you know, he had those crazy handles. But guess what? He just come down, make his move and go. And real quick, that was one of the things that was taught and and pushed upon guards and wing players uh, back in the day by coaches. Like there's no time to be dribbling 15, 20 times and and playing with the ball like that. Make your move and go. Right. So it's the whole thing. Like if you're going to cross over, make your crossover and get to the rim. Don't play around with the ball. Um one one dribble, two dribble pull up. That's why you see your Kobe's and your Michael Jordan's and your Kawhi Leonard's and those guys like that are so deadly. They don't need to play with the ball and dribble 42 times and lull you to sleep as a defender just to get their shot off. To me, that says that like it looks cool, but that's really less skilled than to be able to basically get your shot off in a phone booth, move quickly, minimal, um, minimal dribbling and, and get a good quality shot off. But, you know, again, that that may just be the old school mentality. Um, da, da, da. <laughs> oh man, yeah, Transformer, you're right. If if all three of us were in there, that definitely could have lasted longer. Um, okay, so where was I? Yeah, so Tim Hardaway Sr., yeah, one of the all time great point guards, man. Um, if any of you are old enough to remember when he was with the Golden State Warriors, when he first got in the league, there was a, a, a triumvirate, a threesome, and they called them Run TMC, right? Because at the time, you know, well, not at the time, but Run DMC was one of the all-time great early uh, hip-hop acts, right? One of the great groups. And so they called um, they called the threesome in Golden State Run TMC for, uh, what is it? The, the T was Tim Hardaway, the M was Mitch Richmond, and the C was Chris Mullen. Chris Mullen was three-time Big East player of the year, which in of itself is crazy because at that time in the Big East was like, 
uh, Patrick Ewing and 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 I think Derek Coleman was Derek Coleman in it. Yeah, Derek Coleman. So like the Big East was bonkers at that time, and Chris Mullen won Big East Player of the Year three times out of four, and so he he was a monster. And um, you know, so he was there with Tim Hardaway and Mitch Richmond, and a lot of people forget how great Mitch Richmond was. He's a top 10 two guard all time. He was a beast. He could take you in the post. He could shoot the three. He could shoot the mid range, just a really smooth player. And I believe on the short list of players, I want to say there's only seven or eight players all time. Don't quote me, but I believe it's like seven or eight players of all time that average 21 or more points per game in like their first. Well, I guess that status changed with LeBron and maybe Melo, but 21 uh, points or more per game in their first 10 years in the league. But Mitch Richmond was a walking bucket coming straight into the league. So absolute problem. Um, Sneed says uh, on Tim Hardaway, the amount of distance between Tim Hardaway and the defender is crazy. Watch the first step on the crossover. Dude's a ghost. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. He come down, boom, boom, just hit you like that fast and he's gone. And it's like, whoa, what happened there? So he's crazy. Um, LA uh, Laker Nation, you're absolutely right. Mitch Richmond would destroy today's NBA. He's one of my top five favorite players. Like Mitch Richmond was raw. Like I said, he'd take you on the block. And Michael Jordan talked about how tough a cover Rich uh, Mitch Richmond was in terms of trying to guard him because he was super strong and he could jump and he could shoot it and he could put it on the floor. Like really not a lot of weakness in his um, offensive toolkit. Really solid, like all around game. Mitch Richmond would be a killer today. So anyway, um, Tim Hardaway played with those guys and they called them run TMC. That was, that was the group in uh, Golden State there and they were coached by Don Nelson. And that was kind of really... The first true iteration of small ball, get up and down the floor, not a whole lot of defense, but really score a lot of points. At that time, uh, Chris Mullen, he he was so nice. He averaged 25, I think 25, 5, and 4 for five straight years. And I believe he and Larry Bird uh, were, he, Larry Bird, I think probably and Michael Jordan were probably the only three guys in, in the league to do that for that stretch. But um, Chris Mullen was not, well, no, no, I'm sorry. Larry Bird was out of league already by, by the time he did that. But the point is Chris Mullen was super nice. He could shoot it. He could put it on the floor. He wasn't super athletic, but, and he could pass it, but he was, he was just nice. So Tim Hardaway comes into the league. He's doing his thing. And so I'm listening to the, um, all, all the smoke podcast with Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson and Tim Hardaway. And he had, I thought some really, uh, interesting comments to make. So We'll start there and then uh, we'll come back and we will discuss it. So I got two separate clips of him talking. So we'll go to the first one and then we'll come back. When I see the, the older players that played before us, I always give them homage. You know, I always talk to them always. And the young guys, you know, a lot of these young guys don't know these guys. Mm -mm. And they need to, you know, like Anthony Edwards, you need to know these guys. Mm -hmm. Well, it kind of seems like, and I got kids that are, you know, 15, about to be 16. It seems like this generation of maybe 25 and younger don't, I wouldn't say they don't respect. I just, maybe there's just so much other shit going on that they don't know the history of right. what right. was before them. It's not, it's not, not respect. Yeah. They they just got other shit. That's a lot going of on. a lot of stuff. It's, going it's on. a that lot matter. of stuff that yeah. matters. Yeah. yeah, yeah, to them. Yeah, <laughs> you know, right. you know. But but I, I and, and you right, you right about that. Mm -hmm. And 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 a lot of these a lot of these kids uh, need to brush up, like you say. I right, go look up Tim Hardaway, mm -hmm. or or go look up Stephen Jackson. Mm -hmm. All right, go look up Mac Browns. Go look up mm -hmm. you, you out of sight, out of mind. How come we don't talk about Kobe? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> How come we don't talk about Kobe the way we should talk about Kobe? If Kobe was alive, we'd be talking about Kobe every day. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. But like I say, out of sight, out of mind, yeah. they, they, it, everybody just skip over him. Crazy with, with the how history. fast they slip. We, I mean, don't let, we don't let him. We go crazy. I don't either. It, I don't either. I don't yeah. let him. I say, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, we missing a guy. Yeah, right. Man. Kobe Bryant. They'd be like, oh, yeah. I'm like, see. Well, you know what's funny is that it, what I what we found is people that played with or against him don't miss him or 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 don't or do speak about him. But it's I think it's the media that never played and all these people who are True. experts in the game have Bron jumping over everybody and right <laughs> up in that same kind. And that's not what well, that's what all due respect to Bron. Incredible. Yes. But I feel like obviously there was a pecking order and it always seems like guys that played with or against Kobe have Kobe at the top of the mountain as well. Mm -hmm. Even of course. the youngest is playing right now. Yes. You ask them, they Kobe at the top, SGA, mm -hmm. all of them, Kobe mm -hmm. at the top of their list. All right, so Y'all know I loved a lot of what God said between those three cats right there. So the first part, I love what Tim Hardaway said 
about paying homage to the guys that came before. So me personally, right, if you all don't know this about me, not just with sports, but I'm a history person in general. I love history, right? I love history, world history, military history, European history, African history, so on and so forth. I love history, big history person. Cool. And so as such, I understand the importance of what came before. And it's really odd that this generation on the whole doesn't seem to have any regard for history nor interest in it. And that's that's crazy to me. They think like everything just happened, right? <laughs> and that nothing that happened prior to them has any value. So that's really weird to me. And I love that Tim Hardaway said, when I see the guys that came before me, I always pay homage. Why does he pay homage? Because the money he was able to make, the things he was able to do, how did that come about? From the cats that came before and paved the way. But now you got, it's so weird to me that you have, um, so many young cats out here, young cats, young women too, that have no regard for history, think it's totally irrelevant, think the people that came before don't matter, think the people that came before suck because they didn't have this, they didn't have that. Remember in the in the last segment, I was talking about how each generation gets progressively mentally and physically weaker than its predecessor. And that's just a fact because life is getting easier. Life is not as hard. So they don't need the same level of durability, right? And so I, I suppose that that, that ideal to pay homage to those that paved the way for you for whatever reason is just fading away and that's disturbing but i love that tim hardaway made it a point to say that that's something he does whenever he sees the cast that came before because the young generation now they act like they started everything most of them don't have any regards for what came before and i thought that was weird um and i love that he mentioned anthony edwards we've talked about him ad nauseum and his idiotic comments basically saying well i, I don't know but because i didn't see it but uh, you know, Michael Jordan was the only one who had skill back then, like totally absurd. Right. Um, let's see. Sneed says, I believe these young guys don't like how the legacy players are celebrated so much. They call them old heads haters, but they seem to be what they are describing. Ironic. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Sneed, because I think what happens is they call us old head haters, but couldn't we call them young head haters? Because they seem to hate everything that came before. It's like, why are you upset that the legacy players are celebrated again? They made it possible, excuse me, for what you do. And if you're honest with yourself, not you, Sneed, but if you're honest with yourself as a player today and you go back and watch, right, wouldn't you, instead of saying, man, these dudes suck, they sorry, they don't have no skill, why would you not look and say, damn, look at the sneakers these dudes are playing in? How did they play in that? They must have been tough. Or damn, uh, Kevin McHale played the entire 86 playoff championship run with a broken foot. Damn, that guy must have been tough. And he's still out here putting people in the torture chamber on the block. Damn, they didn't have sports science like we do. They didn't have sports medicine like we do. Damn, they didn't fly private like we do. How did they do all that? Like, for instance, let me give you an example, right? Obviously, I never played professional athletics, but I served in the military. I served in the Army. And one of my duty stations, I spent a year in Korea. And Korea is one of those places that's weird. It can be one of the hottest places you can go, but it can also be one of the coldest places you can go, right? And so when you go over there, part of what you get in your initial uh, your uh, initial gear that they issue you, you get really high-end cold weather gear, right? And so, because Korea can get super, super cold. And so I look at it and I think back to the military history stuff I've read. And during the Korean War, I know for a fact they didn't have all this technologically advanced cold weather gear, right? And so they'd be on the field during battles and it would get so cold that the corpses would freeze and they would stack up the corpses to use as windbreaks, right? Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because whenever I meet guys who are Korean war veterans, I always stop and shake their hand and tell them, thank you for your service because I know what it took for those guys to be out there doing what they were doing and I doubt I have the kind of stuff that they had to be able to have done it, right? And so I always make sure I say, hey, listen, thank you so much. You know, I don't even tell my serving career, I was, thank you for your service, because I know those guys were built of stronger stuff than I am. And that doesn't, that doesn't denigrate me to do that. So I can't, for the life of me, figure out why these young cats and these young athletes are like this. But, you know, at the same time, I can't expect everyone to see the world and think the way I think. So I get it. Um, Sneed says legacy players are the reasons we are at this point. The respect has been earned. It isn't optional to it isn't optional, excuse me, to respect the founding players. Apparently, these young cats think it is. Apparently so, right? So anyway, Anthony Edwards, right? Um, they keep calling him out and they're going to keep calling him out. Realistically, I think what he needs to do at some point is say, listen, 
I understand that I made a really idiotic statement a while back. A lot of people been calling me out about it, whether it's uh, individual content creators, whether it's mainstream media, whether it's the players. And I want to take this time here to to humbly apologize and give you guys your flowers and the respect you're due for everything that you did to pave the way for us. That would fix all of this. But he hasn't done that. He wants to sit back quietly. That would fix all of it because the level of disrespect that he showed was incredible. So anyway, the next thing I, I noticed and I didn't like it was Matt Barnes making excuses for the young cats. Right. When he says he doesn't think it's a lack of respect, he just thinks they have so much going on. No, it's a lack of respect. I just talked about that. And realistically, my thing is this. There's no real excuse for young cats not knowing what ha what happened in the past. And why do I say there's no real excuse for that? The reason I say there's no real excuse, we talk about it all the time, right? Um, we all have smartphones, am I right? We all got smartphones. So if you have a smartphone, you literally have access to more information at any given moment than anybody who's ever lived before you. You literally have that, the World Wide Web, right? More information in the palm of your hand than anybody in the history of the world who lived before you. So you have no, I'm not expecting you to be a doctor. I'm not expecting you to be a lawyer, PhD, whatever. But I'm not, I'm expecting you not to be ignorant, especially not in your chosen field. You don't get that excuse, right? And so there's no excuse not to know the history. So for Matt Barnes and Tim Hardaway said, well, I don't think it's not, not respect. I just think they have so much stuff going on. No, 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 no. You don't make excuses for nonsense, right? Um, Laker Nation says weak men create hard times. Hard times create strong men. Strong men create easier times. Easier times create weak men. And that's a fact. Like you said, Bruce, we are living in easier times. Absolutely. And and I can admit that even for myself, because like I said, I know I'm not the caliber of man that my grandfathers were. I'm not the caliber of man my father was. Right. And unfortunately, as much as I'm trying, maybe my son may not be. I think he'll be better than me in some aspects, but he's not going to be as physically or mentally strong as me just because of the way things are. Right. It, it's just a function of life and each successive generation getting weaker. Uh, Sneed says, Ant-Man isn't even that good. He's a fine player, but what has he accomplished? What has he done for the game? And so here's the thing about that. That's why Magic said, I don't even respond to anybody who hasn't won a championship, right? So you got to win something, then you can start talking. And that's one of the things I loved about Tatum when he finally won and he got interviewed. And he was like, you know, um, especially playing for the Celtics, to be able to go in those rooms, you got to win. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, Sneed says, I used to really like Ant-Man. Then he opened his mouth. Absolutely. Absolutely. But what I do love going on with the, with the next part of that video we just saw with Tim Hardaway and these guys, I love the fact that um, they brought up Kobe. Right. And this is really interesting because remember last week, I think it was Wednesday on the Wednesday episode, we did the topic of or maybe it was prior to that. But anyway, we did the topic recently of um, who's who was really better, Kobe or LeBron. And of course, you know, the LeBron people go crazy and all that. But it's really a legitimate question. Of course, the LeBron people just going to go to the stats and say, oh, I got four finals MVPs or Shaq carried Kobe and, you know, push all the, the usual narratives. But if we're really real, and this is why I always point to it, right? Because, again, they tell me that because I didn't play, I don't know anything. And that's fine. That's fine that you feel that way. But then what happens when the players corroborate my stance? The same players, right? So we heard Matt Barnes just say it and Steven Jackson they say that LeBron, who has had an all-time great career, and we know, somehow managed to jump Kobe. And a lot of that is a media creation. I think Clutch had a, had a lot to do with that. But a lot of it is the media creation. And real quick, he took he took a slick shot at the media there, the media and all these guys who never played. Just because you didn't play, does that mean you don't know anything? Come on, man, stop, stop. Because I always say it, the people who didn't play probably spend more time studying the game than the people who did. They just don't have the genetic gifts to have gotten to where you got to. Right. I'm not I'm not six foot eight. I can't jump out of the gym. Right. So, I mean, there are certain and I'm not saying everyone in the league is six foot eight. But the point is, a lot of people who play on that level, even if they're six foot, they have certain genetic gifts. Right. Explosiveness, mega speed, whatever it may be. Not to say they don't work, but you, you get the point I'm trying to make. Um, Draymond Green is another one who opened his mouth <laughs> and let everyone know he is a damn fool. Absolutely. Um, yep. Uh, Transformer says, and I think he's speaking about Ant-Man, 
I still like him. Kid is just young and misinformed. Most of his generation is. It's freaking sad with so much access to technology and research. And you're absolutely right, Transformer. And that is why I can't give him a pass. I can't. Too much information, too easily accessible. You don't get to say dumb stuff and get a pass. All right. Um. So, yeah, I, I love how Matt Barnes and, and Timmy and uh, Timmy Hardaway Sr. and um, Stack uh, said, like, yo, what happened to Kobe? We don't talk about Kobe enough. All of a sudden, LeBron just, um, you know, ho- uh, not hopped over him, but, you know, jumped over him in, in the pecking order. And it shouldn't be like that. And Matt Barnes said the big one. He said, most of the guys we know who played with and against Kobe have him right up there at the top. So how do we just disregard that? I know you got people like Young Disciple and all these. Uh, who was who the other one? Enter the Twins, all these crazy psycho freaking uh, LeBron people who will attack you and call you and start screaming and all this and all that. And that's cool. That's cool that you're passionate and that you love your guy. But how do we suddenly disregard that so many players think that Kobe is better than LeBron, right? Because again, y'all tell me not, you know, y'all tell me that (laughs) y'all tell me that Kobe, I'm sorry. Y'all tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about because I didn't play. So when you get the people who did, all of a sudden, what they have to say doesn't matter either. So it's just interesting how the goalposts move. But anyway, I, I love that segment, and I thought they had some really good stuff to say. So let's go back to the next part of Tim Hardaway in his uh, all the smoke, um, all the smoke uh, 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 interview. Oh, Bruce, what up, Bruce or Sue? Um, because he has no scandals, <sighs> Bruce. So one, what is having scandals have to do what with what you can do between the lines, right? And I say that to say, and I'm not advocating for scandals, of course. I would prefer he had no scandals, like my guy. Hakeem, your dream. Hakeem, the dream, right? <laughs> I, I, I really would prefer that he had no scandals. However, that is what that is, right? That doesn't have anything to do with what he does between the lines. And, and I point to a guy like Lawrence Taylor. I've talked about it ad nauseum. Lawrence Taylor, they literally had to go get this dude from a crack house on a game day morning, more than once, right? More than once. Scandals galore. He's arguably, arguably, I don't know if he is, but he's arguably the greatest defensive player in the history of football. It doesn't change what you do between the lines. Now, Bruce, we know that you're a big freaking LeBron guy and you say LeBron has a clean slate, but does he really? Does he really? The fact that he's never been caught in anything doesn't mean his slate is clean, right? He got, they had to investigate him in the whole PED thing. Now he was clear to that. Cool. But he got investigated in that. Now his name is coming up in the, in the Diddy stuff, right? Again, I'm not saying he did anything wrong. I'm not accusing him of that, but his name is coming up in it. There's rumors that he, uh, that he had a a kid outside of wedlock and stashed the kid and, and the mother away. And he's been taking care of them for a long time. So, it's not to say that he's got a clean slate. It's to say that they have done an outstanding job of keeping things from coming to light that could damage his reputation. Nobody truly has a clean slate, right? Nobody, not you, not me, nobody, nobody truly. Everybody has done stuff, right? It's just a matter of whether or not it gets to light. Um, Shyam says clutch sports and bronze zaddy (laughs) is hiding his scandals. I mean, it's, it's possible. It's possible. Um, uh, so why, wait, wait a minute. Why is it, man? Stop it, Bruce. Um, you, you're the one who came here and made the definitive statement that he has no scandals and he has a clean slate as if you know this for fact. And I'm just telling you some of the things that have been alleged. Notice I didn't say he did anything. I didn't say he's guilty of anything. You stated definitively he's got a clean slate and he's got a slate and he's got no scandals. And I'm just telling you some of the things that have been alleged. That's all I did. That's all I did. Um, let's see. Uh, Transformer says, what? He hasn't been caught. That can't make a slate clean. That's a reach, brother. It's clean, and he's innocent until proven guilty. His record is clean. His record is clean. His record is clean. Yes. But anyway, I'm not going to get into this because let me make it clear again. I am not accusing LeBron James of having done anything wrong. I am not accusing LeBron James of having done anything wrong. I want to make that clear. Okay. Moving right along. Um, <laughs> uh, so let's go ahead and, um, let's go ahead and wait a minute, but Kobe wasn't, Kobe wasn't convicted of anything either. Right. Right. Does that make him guilty? No, it doesn't. So the same way we want to throw Kobe under the bus, I'm just saying. 
So let's let's keep it. Let's keep it a level playing field and let's keep it consistent. I know that's hard for a lot of people, especially where LeBron, their brew is involved. Here we go. Kobe is a horrible person. I'm glad you know all these people, Bruce. I'm glad you do. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and get back to Tim Hardaway Sr. And it's amazing how easily LeBron can just straight uh, co-opt the conversation or discussion. Anyway, let's get back to Tim Hardaway Sr. on the All the Smoke discussion. And let's hear what else he had to say, because, again, I think he had some really cool stuff. Absolutely. No question. I got a question, though, because you were someone who had your career and then went into coaching and you kind of obviously every generation, every ever is different. What is the difference between the players today and, and maybe the players, how they were when y'all played and then kind of towards the end of your career when we were coming in? We had basketball IQ. Mm. We understood basketball. We paid attention to details. We wanted it. We understood what it took to win. Um, we put in the work to win. It wasn't fake work. Some guys out there fake working because they got to be out there. And the camera on them. And the camera on them. You know, uh, they, you, you, could, you could really look in their face and see if they want to be out there. You know, like we wanted to be out there. When we came out there, we had a face on, mm -hmm. on our face like, yeah. Trying to kill. It's go, it's, yeah, it's going to be on. Mm -hmm. Right here. When we come out, y'all, people come out to shoot. And when they times to shoot, yeah, we we not hugging a baby. Yeah. We not kissing this person. We not doing this. We not doing that. We come out here and we shooting a basketball. We Our mind is ready to play the game of basketball. We have a job to do. Mm -hmm. You know, this ain't fun time. Mm-hmm. This is basketball time. This is our job. This is our work. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what it was about. Today, uh, it's about, hey, you know, kissing babies here. Like, you want to be the president. Doing your TikTok in the yeah, locker the room for the game. You know, and Give me all, my money. Right, all that right, dumbass right. shit. Like, 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 like Chauncey Billups said. He said, somebody at halftime, he, he ran in there and looking at it and posted his stuff at halftime. Posted a dunk. Yeah, posted a dunk. Chauncey said, what are you doing, man? Your mind's supposed to be in the game. It was getting blown out, too. Right. See what I'm saying? <laughs> but See what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, but you know, that, that, I would have cut, right cut him yeah, right there. Right. Yeah. I would have Yeah. I would have said, you got to stay. If you want to be back here, you stay back here. You can't even mm. come out to the mm. bench. You know, that, that's, that's what, that's what t today's game is. But when we played, we, we, we had. We had an attitude. Mm -hmm. It we, meant something, and you could be you could be cool just after the game, right? After the game, not right. during the game. You might right. fight one of your homeboys exactly. during the game, and then drink a beer with them after the game. Exactly. Yeah. That's the way it was. Mm -hmm. I would say these kids are skilled as a motherfucker, though. Skill. I just think the skill level is higher than it's ever been. I just think the, the IQ, playing without the ball, off the ball, understanding pick and rolls, how to get off when you don't have the ball in your hands. I think that's what a lot of these kids and NBA players lack these days. Pass, just stand. <laughs> Right. Why are you standing? You're not gonna yeah. never get the ball back. All right. You know, why don't you cut? Why don't you do something? Yeah. But that's a lack of um um IQ. coaching. Coaching yeah. too. Coaching too. Back in high Andy school. Shit. Bill Handy said that though. He said this era this to, to explain the errors is this era they worried about getting a bucket. Our era we knew how to get somebody else a bucket. Right. And, and that says a lot. Right. That says a lot. That, that's why I like watching Golden State. I like watching Boston. You know, I like watching those teams because they move the ball. Ball mm -hmm. finds energy. Mm -hmm. they, yeah, it finds energy. It's find the right mm -hmm. person. You know, one pass, you you might want to shoot, and that man open right there, here you go. Good shot With for a great no shot. hesitation, mm -hmm. I get you another one. Mm -hmm. That's the way it's supposed to be. All right, so, again, I love what these guys had to say. This, I thought, was a really good – interview on the whole uh tim hardaway senior talks about growing up in chicago and all the stuff he had to deal with and and how he developed his game and so on and so forth so really good interview if you want to check out the all the smoke podcast and and watch that whole thing it's a little over an hour but it's definitely worth in, uh listening to so um i love how they first started talking about what's the difference between back in the day's game and today's game and so um i love the dichotomy between having skills and having basketball iq and I think that so many players today, uh, revolt, uh, they rely on having quote unquote skills. And again, I, I talked about this last topic, the, the whole skills thing, I think is so overblown because today's players aren't more skilled. They're allowed to get away with more. And as well, they've traded one skill for another. So it's not that they're more skilled, they're just skilled at different things, right? So just to reiterate, they're allowed to travel, right? They're literally allowed to take more steps, they made up this zero step and gather step and all that um, to allow them to have more room to get off their shots, right? So that doesn't make them more skilled. 
they shoot more threes on the hole. So like anything else with more repetition, you're going to be better at it. So, okay, I'll give them their more skilled at shooting threes. But as I constantly talk about, you have point guards who don't know how to make a post-entry pass. You have quote-unquote bigs who don't know how to go down to, down to the block, get position, and score over their left, right shoulder, jump hook, uh, up and under, step through, so on. They don't have legitimate post game, right? We know this. This is not Bruce, Bruce, Bruce. Yo, real, real legitimate question, Bruce. Let me ask you this, and you can put it in the chat or whatever. How old are you, fam? How old are you? I, I really want to know this. Because you talk like one of these cats that's a real, can I be down? Like, like you want to be cool with the young cats, so you co-sign everything they do. I think that's really, really interesting. So, again, you can call it evolution. But, you know what, Bruce? Um, I don't know if you're on your phone or on the computer right now. Look up Stu Jackson rules changes. Stu Jackson NBA rules changes. And you can read about that. Where Stu Jackson, former, uh, I think, vice president of operations for the NBA, literally talks about how they change the rules in order to benefit offensive players. That's not more skilled when I make it easier for you to do what you do. If you create new things within the framework of the current rule set that makes you more effective, that makes you more skilled. It does not make you more skilled if I change the rules to make it easier for you. But cool, you feel how you feel. All right, so anyway... I love also Tim Hardaway says um, uh, <laughs> the fake work. He talks about guys re- back then really like to work to become great players, right? They to, to become uh, great players and not necessarily like doing the fake work like they do now. And I think that actually directly ties in to what Wemby was saying when he was surprised about how many dudes in the league don't work nearly as hard as he thought. And he's like, wow, that's it? Because you can see he's got the dog in him and he – He really works and truly wants to be great. And to come over here and see so many of these players that are so entitled and they're getting all this money and they're not really working hard. And I know, well, I don't know for sure he was referring to him, but I'll say the name Ben Simmons, a guy like that. I'm sure Wemby's looking like this guy's making all this money, like 200 mil. He's getting paid like this and he barely plays. And when he does play, he's sorry. Like, are we for real? So I love that Tim Hardaway and these guys talked about the fake work and showing out because the cameras are on, right? I thought that was really good. And I saw the link, unintentional as it may have been, between their comments and the Wembenyama comments. I really liked uh, how that ended up working out. Um, I, I also liked how they talked about the mindset of these younger players. And they pointed out one of them. And I actually heard this story before with Chauncey Billups, who obviously is now the coach of the Portland Trailblazers. And his team is getting blown out at the halftime and they're in uh, for the break. And one of the players on his team was grabbing his cell phone to like post a dunk that he got. And he's like, yo, are you serious right now? Like, what are you doing, man? Get, focus on the game. Let's get back out there and play. Like, there's no excuse for that. And I know some people say, oh, you just old head hater. You don't understand. Blah, blah, blah. Trust me. I understand the power of social media. I have to use it to try and push this platform that I'm working on building here. Right. Um, so I do understand the power of social media and branding and how important it is. And uh, Bruce, also, I shouted you out. I don't know if you were in here. I shouted you out at the beginning of the show because, as you know, I wasn't going to do the show tonight. But, you know, you are one of the people that uh, pushed me to get on here and do the show tonight. So I really appreciate that, brother. Thank you so much. But, yeah, um, the whole the mindset of these younger players, if you criticize it, you're a hater. But realistically, that mindset is not going to allow these dudes to become great. But I guess. I guess many of them really don't care about that, right? And so we always, like, people would say, oh, you old head haters always talk about Michael Jordan. But me personally, when I talk about that, I talk about Kobe, I talk about Mike, I talk about Bird, I talk about Isaiah, and I talk about Magic. Those guys, in my estimation, could be wrong, but to me, those are the most psychomaniacal competitors that the NBA has ever seen. Like, they used to talk about Isaiah. They said, um, somebody said, he would stab your mother in the heart to win a basketball game. Now, I'm sure that was hyperbole, right? But the point is, like, he was that crazy of a competitor. Magic could kill you while he was smiling. Bird is talking to you, but he's meanwhile doing everything that he could do to beat you. Like, we see all these dudes and they can't play because their toenail hurts or their stomach hurts or whatever it is. Meanwhile, you look at a Larry Bird who literally later in his career, and if you read Bird Watching or When the Game Was Ours, you will find out about this, he would literally be in traction before the games. He would be in traction before the games. 
But then he would get up and he would get out there and dominate and kill guys. Now, everybody's level of pain tolerance is different, right? But I say that to say, as someone who has had pinched nerves and whatnot in my back, that's part of the reason I had to leave the military. When when your back locks up on you, you cannot move. And the slightest move is agony. If you've ever had back problems, you'll understand what I'm saying. If you haven't, you really don't understand how every little move that your body makes is contingent on your back. And so if your back locks up on you and you try to move, it is so freaking painful. But Larry Bird was out there giving dudes work with a bad back on the floor, a bad back and later in his career, bad feet. Like people don't understand what that is. And so when I talked to Isaiah Thomas played on a broken ankle, there you go. Um, badly sprained ankle as well in that legendary game six in the 1988 NBA finals where he set the then record for points in a quarter in the NBA Finals with, I think, 25. Allen Iverson later broke it with 26. But the point is, you look at all these guys, and they would do anything to win. And I think there's very few players who still have that mentality. Again, like I discussed earlier, part of it is that the money is so big now, and with these guaranteed contracts, dudes is like, man, I don't got to be out here killing myself, and I'm going to still get paid the same way. But that's just it. They don't have the same mentality. And so... That's not taking shots at the young cats. That's just simple fact. The mentality is not the same. They're not built the same, the vast majority of them. So there's that. All right. Um, And finally, the other thing I liked that Tim Hardaway and these guys talked about is they talked about the lack of coaching. And so that's not necessarily, I know it sounds like I blame the players a lot, and I do, but there's also the other part, the lack of coaching. But At the same time, it also comes back to the players and maybe even the parents or whatever family unit or whoever the guardian is, because nowadays with the way AAU is and the way um, high school is and this whole player empowerment and all of this, let's say I'm a high school coach or an AAU coach and I get I get Bruce Hope and he's a star player. Right. And I bring him in my program, but I want to coach him hard and I want to really get on him. Right. And because I know he's got everything in him to be an incredible player and to go all the way to the NBA. If I try to coach him hard and really get on and pause, then guess what he's going to do? He's going to leave my pro- program and go somewhere else where he can do whatever he wants to do. And he's not going to he's not going to be ridden hard, paused by the coaches and, and the coaching staff. And he, they're going to let him do whatever he wants. But that is a disservice to the player. Right. So it's on both sides. Um, a failure to properly coach and a failure to properly be coached. I talk about it all the time. As great as LeBron is, he's not a guy that's coachable. And so there's there's that problem. So, you know, I think it all kind of comes together. But I love what Tim Hardaway had to say in this interview. And I love um, what what Steven Jackson and um, and uh, Matt Barnes, Matt Barnes also had to say in this interview. I thought there was some some really good commentary. And again, it's uh, all the smoke, the Tim Hardaway episode. If you want to check that out, I would I would highly recommend going and listening to it. But, yeah, those are my thoughts on. That particular topic, Tim Hardaway on on all the smoke and some of the commentary that he made. And uh, I, I just thought it was really interesting. And again, that was one of the things that I wanted to uh, make a topic and, and come on to the show and discuss with you guys. So now uh, you know what's about to happen. I'm going to put the number in the chat. Um, yeah, absolutely. Naked Laker Nation. If you listen to what is it? Ticket in the truth. Um, Kevin Garnett talks about how Paul Pierce was just getting so much fluid drained out of his knees and then going out there and play. But again, guys today, they're not built the same. So the phone number is 904-219-8264, 904-219-8264. And it's scrolling on the bottom of your screen. I really would love to hear some, uh, hear some calls and, and take a few calls and talk to you guys on what Tim Hardaway had to say in this interview. And um, if you would also like to push back on my thoughts on this, I know, I know Bruce doesn't agree with a lot of what I had to say. Um, Laker Nation and I, we are we are on a uh, we're on a I think seems to be on a similar page uh, with this, uh, despite the fact that he's a Laker guy. <laughs> nah, nah, it's all love, man. Transformer can tell you that, but yeah, I, I would love to hear from you guys what what your thoughts are on uh, on what Tim Hardaway had to say and what I had to say. So yeah, I'll just uh, I'll take a break here and wait to uh, hear what what you guys have to say. Hopefully, I can get a call on that. In the meantime, Bruce, you didn't answer me, man. How old are you, man? Because I'm I'm really curious to know how a grown man like yourself 
seems to be so much of a, a, a can I be down that I, I will say anything to seem cool with these young cats and be on the same page with them. That's that's really weird to me. Um, yeah, that's that's just odd. But everybody's different, right? Pause, Transformer. Damn. Mm-hmm. Try to cover that up, huh? I'm not going for it. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> Transformer, which, I, I know you got thoughts on this, man. What's your thoughts on what Tim Hardaway had to say and and uh, and uh, the other guys on uh, All the Smoke, man? I, I know you got something to say. You always got a lot to say. Well, where are you on this stuff? I'm really surprised nobody has anything to say on this. All right. Well, okay. What I'm going to do then is move right along and we are going to go to our uh, next topic. And that is Kyle Shanahan. So we are in the, we're in the height of football season, right? So I couldn't just let football season go by and do a show without a football topic. I can't do that. Right. So this is something interesting that, that I heard, um, the odd couple, Rob Parker and Kelvin Washington, discussing uh, the other night. And I, I thought it was a really, I thought it was also an interesting topic, right? When I hear these things, it makes me stop and think. And since I have a horrible freaking short term memory, I grab my phone and I make a note and then I start looking stuff up later. If, if it's something I think I might want to discuss with you guys, right? I send it to G and the Transformer, say, hey, what do you all think of this topic? Blah, blah, blah. And then we go forward from there, right? Unless I just decide to do a live by myself, which sometimes I do. Anyway. Um, this one really Laker Nation. Interesting. Okay, uh, that that's the show I listen to like every day. Um, I rather enjoy it, but you know, I respect. Uh, oh, here's Transformer. What did Transformer say? All right. So this is this is the last comment on the Tim Hardaway Senior on the All the Smoke podcast. So uh, Transformer says he wasn't wrong. I love how he referenced that there are levels, differences in the game, and to era. I think we have to get out of this competition mo comparison mindset so strongly. If rules are not the okay, all right. I'm I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait for you. I guess you got another comment, so I'm waiting for that. Um, okay. If rules are not the same, system is not the same. Then what are we truly comparing and getting into heavy debates about? Yeah, I, you know what? I would love to say that, but the problem is when you start talking this goat stuff greatest of all time it opens the door unfortunately across errors right and i'll say for me the only thing the only things you that really bar you from making a true and legitimate comparison one as you mentioned transform are the rules and two you can't compare stats across errors for for instance right we say that lebron is the greatest scorer of all time because he's got the most points of all time how can we fairly do that when for the first 10 years of kareem's career the first half there were no three-pointers how can we do that? Right. Not saying that he would have been shooting them if they were there, but he didn't even have the option. So how can we say that? That's why me personally, I always say that when we're talking about these records and all that stuff, we should start at the rules changes around 2005. I think 2005, 2006, right around that time. That's where you should start really um, having that discussion because it should be merger and then 2005 rules changes on. So you have um, the merger up until, what, 2005, then 2005 to current. That's what I think it should be because just, you know, or or maybe merger up until the three-point line was introduced. I think that's better. So merger until 1980, right? So three-point era, three-point line, I should say. And then between 1980 and 2005, that's, that's a fair amount of time, then 2005 to present. So I get what you're saying. That would make it much better if you would just – divvy it up into errors and then say this player is the best of that era. Now, if you got guys who overlap like a Kobe, um, which he, I guess he's really the only one that truly overlaps. Um, Vince Carter, he overlaps, but he's not good enough to even be in this discussion. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't mention him, but Kobe would be the one 
then you would have to kind of come up with something to to describe him because he's just something totally different. Uh, let's see. LeBron, most consistent scorer ever, best scorer. Of course you can't say that. If you said that, you're a fool. Um, <laughs> if that's the case, Carl is a better scorer than most of the folks from Mount Rushmore. Uh, Carl Malone was an incredible scorer. But anyway, different story. 